Bible clearly records the truth about the birth of the earth. The evidence that God the Creator did the works of creation with His divine power is clearly seen like this even today. As God said, let there be light, the original light of creation surrounded the earth. God called this period when the light surrounds the earth as the day. The period when the light was withdrawn, God called it night. Even from the first day when there was no sun, no moon, no stars, there was a separation between day and night on the earth. The expression God separated the light from the darkness contains very important spiritual meaning. God divided and separated the domain of light that belongs to Him from the domain of darkness that belongs to Lucifer. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and j e w s y and viewers, In heaven there is no night, which is darkness, but only day, which is light. On this earth, which serves as the stage for human cultivation, the ratio between day and night is one to one. Of course, the length of day and night differs depending on seasons. In the northern hemisphere, a day is longest and night is shortest at the summer solstice around June 21st. After the summer solstice, the day gets shorter and shorter, but night becomes longer and longer. Around December 22nd, the winter solstice, day is shortest, but night becomes longest. After the winter solstice, again, the day gets longer and longer and night becomes shorter and shorter. Likewise, even in the physical sense, the length of day and night is equal, not partial. This fact shows how precisely, according to justice, God is cultivating souls. Just as the ratio between the day and night is equal, God allowed the evil spirits to compete with God under the same conditions. You must understand this well, spiritually. Evil spirits work not only during the night, but also during the day. To say the ratio between day and night is equal, I'm not referring to the physical length of day and night, but to the spiritual length of day and night. Well, the length of physical day and night is also the same, if you calculate it. Well, you'll say amen, if you follow me along well. The length of night and of day during a year is actually the same, right? The physical length of day and night is the same, and it means the condition under which the evil spirits compete with God is the same with God's. God made it a fair competition. God is the Creator, and He is the Master of all things, but He never made the condition of human cultivation favorable to Himself. Only then could the human cultivation be a fair game. Just as day and night are equal in the physical sense, God made the spiritual conditions equal as well. Therefore, Lucifer and the evil spirits can never complain that they competed with God under unfair conditions. As in Job, God worked fairly. God accepted the uh, accusation. He didn't take Job's side or help him partially. He made it all things fair. Just as day and night are equal in the physical sense, God made the spiritual conditions equal as well. Therefore, Lucifer and the evil spirits can never say that they competed with God under unfair conditions. Brothers and sisters, God separated day from night precisely like this. You should understand from this that day and night can never coexist with each other even in a spiritual sense. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? No partnership between righteousness and lawlessness. No fellowship between the light and darkness. Truth cannot coexist with untruth. Neither can goodness exist together with evil.
In a spiritual sense, light refers to all the attributes that belong to God who is light itself. For example, truth, goodness, and love are such attributes. On the contrary, darkness in the spiritual sense means all the attributes that belong to evil spirits. Lawlessness, untruth, sin, and evil are such attributes. God allows man to choose either light or darkness according to his free will. Jesus said in John 3 verses 20 and 21, For everyone who does evil hates the light. Evil doers hate light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Our Lord did only good things. He did things only in goodness. You know, he strengthened the poor, gave him, you know, gave him hope for heaven, healed them, and drove demons away. He taught, you know, God you know, clearly to them and did all the things in goodness. But people tried to kill him. They envied him out of jealousy, especially those you know, who knew the law, the high priests, scribes, Pharisees. They tried to have him killed. They also tried to kill such disciples of, you know, uh, Peter, Apostle Paul, and other forefathers of faith. Since King Saul was evil, he also tried to kill such a great prophet Samuel. The prophet had to hide himself from King Saul and did his utmost to never cross paths with the king. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, so that his deeds may be manifested as having been wrote in God. If a man has evil in his heart, he will walk the way of darkness, not the way of light. On the other hand, if he has goodness, he will come forth toward the light. However, evil spirits control people, encouraging them to walk the way of darkness. They make use of all things of untruth that belong to the world and deceive people to commit sins. However, if you love God, you must flatly refuse the temptations of the world and come forth toward the light in pursuit of the truth. And you must always stay in the light, not in the darkness. Let me tell you more about how to stay in the light in greater detail. In the Bible, you can find the do's and don'ts and keeps and cast offs. To obey the scripture and live by it is to shed the darkness and to stay in the light. To be more specific, there are many don'ts in the Bible. Don't hate, don't lie, don't envy, don't be jealousy, don't covet what belongs to others. There are, not, there are many don'ts in the 66 books of the Bible, both in the Old and New Testaments. If you do what you are told not to do, then you are staying in the darkness. If you do what God tells you not to, such as you know, don't do the work of the flesh, don't commit adultery, you are staying in the darkness. On the other hand, if you don't do as you are told not to do, you are staying in the light. The Bible tells you what to cast off. Abstain from every form of evil, cast off sin, forsake hot temper, cast off greed. There are many. If you don't cast off what you are told to cast off, you are staying in the darkness. But if you cast off what you are told to cast off, you are staying in the light. The Bible also tells you to do something and to keep something. Love each other, serve others, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all situations. How good will it be if you do what you are told to do? Be faithful, keep the Lord's day holy, keep the law and ordinances of God. To keep these words and to live by them is to stay in the light. If you obey the word of God, all will become well. Students will study well. Since the darkness cannot approach you, you will not worry about any mental disorder or anything like that. 
try staying in the light without using any fleshly thoughts. Such a thing as ringing in the ears will also disappear. So all this is how you stay in the light. On the other hand, if you don't do what you are told to do, and if you don't keep what you are told to keep, you are staying in the darkness. Where do you stay more often? In the light or in the darkness? Ephesians 5 8 says, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You were formerly of darkness. Before you accepted Jesus as your Savior and received the Holy Spirit, you were in darkness. You've been a child of the devil and a slave to sin and darkness. But after you accepted Jesus as a Savior, you are the light in the Lord. You must walk as the children of light, as the children of God. You gotta walk as holy children. Cast off every form of evil. Don't do what you're told not to do, but do what you're told to do and cast away what you're told to cast away and keep what you're told to keep. Then you will all receive blessings. Since we are the children of God, who is light, we must walk in the light. No matter how diligently you attend church, unless you don't keep the word of God, you must realize you belong to darkness. When people belong to darkness, it's the enemy devil and Satan that control people because they have the authority over darkness. The enemy devil and Satan can incite and control the hearts and minds of people who belong to darkness. They can cause people to commit sins and then undergo trials, afflictions, or disasters as retribution for their sins. They cause people to falter into deeper darkness so that they are far away from God. Their ultimate goal is to prevent people from receiving salvation and lead them to hell. It is possible because the enemy devil and Satan have the authority to rule over darkness. Just as Romans 6.23 says that the wage of sin is death, the law of spiritual realm dictates that people will eventually die if they commit sins. Even if you have honor and power in this world, you cannot avoid the law. Even if you are well connected, say, um, connected as in the worldly people, say, uh, please forgive me for the, such an analogy. Even if you are well connected, you cannot get away from it. You are a mommy member and God protects you as you are in the space of the shepherd. It's not going to work like that. If you truly have love and faith, you will obey. If you disobey though and follow the enemy devil and Satan and say you are protected because you are in it, don't you think it's nonsense? It doesn't make sense. Spiritual death refers to falling into the fire of hell, which will never be quenched. This is the destiny of those who live in darkness, which is sin and evil. However, the enemy devil and Satan cannot dare touch those who always stay in the light. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 says, We know that no one who is born of God sins. You are born of God. If you are a son or daughter of God, you will not sin. We know that no one who is born of God sins. But he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. He who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. God protects those who stay in the light because God has the authority over the light. The Bible tells us God protected Daniel, who was thrown into the den of lions, and that he saved Daniel's three friends who were thrown into a burning furnace. You say, Peter was crucified upside down. The Apostle Paul was beheaded. Dick and Stephen was stoned to death. All this is in the providence of God. Isn't it a blessing? They fulfilled their duty and they were given the blessing of dying a martyr's death. 
they would go to heaven since they died for the sake of God's name. They would go to heaven. Would they have feared death? People of great faith do not fear death. Since they won victory, their reward was great. They were sanctified, they were faithful, and then they even died in martyrdom. So their rewards in heaven are great, and their ranks in New Jerusalem are very high. So it's a blessing. It's not that they were unprotected. Father took them since it was time. Daniel's three friends were protected. Since they had not committed any sin, not even their hair was hinged, they could be perfectly protected. Mommy members also experience similar things. For example, even though their car was wrecked in an accident, mommy members inside the car were not hurt at all. As long as people who keep the Lord's Day holy and give proper tithes do not commit sin, that be leading them to death, even if they make a mistake, they are protected in an accident. Keeping the Lord's Day holy and giving proper tithes show that they live in the light to that extent. That's why the darkness cannot work. God surrounds them with light, protects them, and keeps them safe. Moreover, God always gives good things to His children who walk in the light. God gives various overflowing blessings as promised in the Bible. James 1.17 says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Just as the enemy devil and Satan can bring trials and afflictions to those who commit sins, God can bring every good thing and every perfect gift to those who dwell in the light. But the best blessings is the prosperity of your spirit and soul. Therefore, even though God can give as much blessing as possible to His children, He gives blessings to the extent their spirit and soul prosper. Brothers and sisters, when we dwell in the light, we can receive blessings like this, and we can also be protected. So which one would you like to choose, light or darkness? If you are wise, you will all surely choose light and walk toward it. But there is another reason people who love God must choose light and have no reason but to choose light. Only when we walk in the light can we have fellowship with God. For those who love God from the depths of their heart, their fellowship with God is as important as life itself. What about even those who are deeply in love with each other in a fleshly sense? They always want to stay together. At least they want to hear the other's voice when they cannot see each other. What if they cannot keep in touch or cannot see each other? Wouldn't they be hurt in their hearts and wouldn't they be in deep sorrow? For those who truly love God, they are happiest when they have fellowship with God. People who have fellowship with God don't worry about anything no matter what they encounter. They don't worry at all. Those of you running your own business, if you have fellowship with God, what would you worry about? The impossible becomes possible and the possible becomes more prosperous. Why do you worry about you know, going to heaven and to New Jerusalem? And not to mention your family and your children. For John chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. You've heard this time and again. If you walk in darkness, you are lying. If you say you love God and believe in God, it is a lie. If you believe in God, you will, you will not sin. If you love God, you will not commit sin. You cannot stay in the darkness. You cannot walk in the untruth. You cannot but do what you are told to do. You cannot but cast off what God commands you to cast off. So if you say you have fellowship with God and confess you love and believe in Him, but walk in the darkness, you are a liar before God. I believe in God. I love God. Well, they're all lies. You say, I love the shepherd, but it's a lie. We lie and do not practice the truth. But 
If we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Isn't it obvious? As we live by the Word and live in the light, the precious blood of the Lord cleanses us from all sins. Only when you walk in the light can you have true fellowship with God. Since those who truly love God know this, they cannot even turn their eyes toward the darkness. They a v e r darkness, not to mention that they will neither commit the deeds of the darkness nor choose the darkness over light. So I urge you to walk in the light all the more perfectly so that you can have deeper fellowship with God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I elaborated today on the work of God's separating day from the night on the first day of creation. Just as the ratio of day to night in the earth is one to one, God provided conditions that were equal to the evil spirits in the history of human cultivation. God gave the authority to the evil spirits so that they could supervise darkness just as God supervises light. He even gave them a place in which they were to dwell. Once the first day of creation was over, He did so as the second day began. Next time, I will explain where the dwelling place for evil spirit is and what happened on the second day of creation. You could have stayed home and gotten a good night's sleep, but you, but you didn't. You came here to attend this worship service. I believe almost of all of you came here in your free will. You came here following the light since you long for spirit. truth and light. I hope you will always continue to choose light over darkness and make your stay in the light. May the blessing of heaven that God has prepared for the children of light overflow in your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you for your grace and love. Help us grow faith and make life of the message we heard today and fill us with the Holy Spirit. I told them about the first day of creation and about the light and darkness. Help us clearly understand what the light is, what darkness is, and the world of evil spirits and the world of the light and of the spirit so that we cannot be tempted. Bless us to stay in the light and march on toward New Jerusalem with confidence as sons and daughters of God the Father. Father, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries and all the GCN TV viewers and those who are watching via satellites, cables and the internet all over the world transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. 
Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.